you want to know what's going on. My name is Charles Clarkson and I am the Director of Avian Research for the Audubon Society of Rhode Island. The Audubon Society is a large uh, national conservation organization that is devoted to conserving birds and the habitats that they rely on. James Audubon was a collector and there is no doubt that a big part of what kind of pushed him to do what he did was this desire to fill in the avian community for us to get a better handle on what the diversity is and how birds interact with each other and with the environment around them. But there's no shortage throughout his writings uh, where he just professes about how beautiful the birds are that he's out and he's witnessing. And I think there's that connection for anybody who studies birds. a backyard birder. The reason you're doing it is because you are attracting these birds that you find absolutely beautiful and meditative, you know, and you can sit on your back deck all day long and watch these vibrant blue jays and red cardinals and yellow warblers. I am no artist, but I cannot deny that birds are like a palette unlike anything else on this planet. Having big fleshy appendages or traits on your feathers or producing a song that is incredibly robust and dynamic, all in an effort to be the male that, that is successful at, at uh, attracting a, a mate or repelling rivals and, and gaining a territory. For me, it's, it's scientific and it's, it is emotional. I'm emotionally connected to the birds that I research. I've felt that from a very young age. I grew up in Virginia. My dad was a carpenter and he got this big farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and I just very quickly gravitated to nature in general. And then being the most obvious part of nature, I, I immediately kind of went towards birds because they're everywhere. You can see them, you can hear them. And so I developed this appreciation for bird life. It wasn't until I took a college course in ornithology that I just realized how unbelievably cool birds really are from an evolutionary perspective, an anatomical perspective. And during that period of evolution, they've just been shaped to these perfect organisms that are capable of not only surviving, but thriving in some of the most hostile environments the world over. You know, birds have the highest resting basal metabolism of, of any vertebrate that I think of them as metabolic hot rods that have been on this planet for 160 million years. These are organisms that are constantly walking the tightrope between life and death on a daily basis. They are artists in themselves over millions of years of evolution, how they've deposited seeds from around the world and caused vegetational communities to sprout up. We manage roughly 10,000 acres here in Rhode Island. What we are primarily interested in is understanding what the bird community is uh, that can be found across all of the properties we manage. We have a one, roughly 150 point count stations established. So for each one of these points, I visit the point two times, once in the non-breeding season and then again during the breeding season. So I'll start navigating to my first point using a GPS unit. By going off trail, you're also more likely to find bird populations that might shy away from the presence of humans. With the volunteer surveys, which are not timed, you can spend all day out birding.
volunteers are welcome across all of our volunteer surveys. And if you don't know your birds very well and you want to learn, this is a great opportunity to do so. And there's a wood, wood thrush from up ahead on the right. We get a lot of information that is scientifically useful and they get a wealth of information in terms of the world around them. And so it's just a really, it's a win-win for everybody. There was a great paper put out in the late 80s by uh, Paul Ehrlich, and he likened biodiversity and functioning ecological communities to the metal rivets found on an airplane. And the analogy is that every one of these rivets is important. If you start removing rivets from this airplane, eventually if you remove enough, the airplane is just gonna fall apart and fall from the sky and crash. And if you think about the planet that way, we are very much part of the biodiversity around us. This is a web, a web of nature, and we are part of that web. Humans cannot survive without nature. I love my job. Yeah, I think uh, I'm one of the few very lucky people on this planet that decided early in life what it was that excited me and then proceeded to follow that path. This is what I want to do. I want to do what I can in my role as a conservationist to make this planet in this small state of Rhode Island uh, better for the birds that reside here, whether they're wintering here or breeding here. I want to do whatever I can, what's in my power, to make their jobs easier. Watch more Art Inc. with new episodes uploaded every Wednesday on ripbs.org slash artinc.